Now if you want a rattly old diesel engine such as our Toyota Land Cruiser, you need to adjust your valve clearances every few years to get maximum airflow or optimum airflow through the valves and reduce the amount of rattling that it does. So here's how we do it with the 1HD FTE engine in the Toyota Land Cruiser. For Dave's next trick, valve clearances. Yeah. So we've got our guide from the Toyota service manual, what came out of the factory people. Uh, and it looks like, is it just the same clearance for every cylinder, right? Uh, yes, just intake and outtake change. So there's an approximate intake, 0.17 to 0.23, so we're gonna pick 0.2 right in the middle. Uh, and we need to loosen off this jobby here. This jobby needs loosened off so that we can check the, the, the rattle here so that we get no rattle. You've been smart here because you are measuring the current clearance before unbolting anything. Yeah, because I might not have to. Why unbolt it if the clearances are good? Because if they are within spec, Hey, Jesus. How big we'll go get? Place your bets. 0.35. Right, 0.4 doesn't fit. 35 does fit and it's sloppy. Right. So, we're supposed to have up to 0.23 and we have 0.35. Above 0.35. Somewhere between 35 and 38. So, what is the impact then of that valve being loose? Is it rattle or does it. It doesn't open fully. Okay, so this would be, I guess, down on torque. Uh, if yeah, it's not, it's not opening fully. So, it's... so the valve doesn't open fully, so not enough air getting in. What we need now is a bit of paper or cardboard to to write things down. To write down. All right. Sixty-five. Sixty-five. Bit ticked. Point six five is that's where yep. slightly. I'll just go straight to 0 0.7 after that, 0 0.7 won't fit, not that much. Let's that out it's really out. Oh no, 0 0.7 does fit. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, it does. <laughs> still going up. It's still going up. Right, 0 0.75 doesn't fit. So it's between 0 0.7 and 0 0.75. So the exhaust is at... Well, I'll put, I'll put 0.7, I'll put the last one that went in. Right. So it's the engine's at top dead centre, which allows you to measure some of the valves based on their position. Uh, so Dave now knows that cylinder 2 exhaust valve is also able to be measured from top dead centre based on the guide on the tablet over there. So between, uh, it's between 0 0.6 and 0 0.7. 0.65 and 0 0.7. So 0 0.65 goes in. 0.65. Right, and I can do intake on some. Right, between 0 0.3 and 0 0.35. It's just... That's 3.5, right? 3.5, I'll try 3.8. I don't think 3.8 will go. No, right, between 3.5 and 3.8. Broadly speaking, they're all worn quite evenly. Around about 0.33 for the intakes and 0.65 to 0.7 for the for the exhaust. So uh, we'll now tighten them all up so that they're back within tolerance. And that should uh, improve the running of this engine in addition to all the other things that we're doing. It's like with engine compression, oh, like if you've got around a hundred, you're okay, but you know, if you've got one at 20. 20, <laughs> that's a knackered one. You've got Check how sloppy that is. Yeah. That's one of the ones that was at 0.7, I think. Right. So, let's crack a lack. Dave will get his 12 mil socket. Yeah. And remove that first Locking nut. Maybe. Oh. Okay. Mother of God. So listen to that. that. Then the adjustable spanner holds the arm so that when you push against the arm, it doesn't snap off. True. And then you use your 12 mil socket again or a 12 mil spanner to remove the fine adjustment locking nut. Major adjustment is that top screwdriver position. So. Tighten that down until it starts to get picked, and then he's loosened does, himself off. Does now. help if you keep the fucking thing in there. 
So he's jigging it around there just to feel for pressure on the feeler gauge, tighten it up, tighten that back up so it's locked in place. And keeping the feeler gauge in, then adjusting. Oh, it's moving the nut. And so I'll tighten that up until it's nice and tight. Or just tight, just tight no more. And then we'll just nip that down until it's there and still be moving. Still it's good. If we can get it out. If I can get back out. And using that to brace the arm because you don't want to snap it off and then snug that down so that now both bolts are locked in position. Voila, that is a valve adjustment. Right, that's it. Okay. So this is an intake, which needs to be at point two. That's spot. We've undone the two nuts, and now Dave is adjusting the main adjuster at the top it's, until it's pretty tight. It is ticked. Right. And then, and the uh, spanner I'm looking for. Snug that back up. Fine adjustment again with the screwdriver, just checking for drag and then lock it back I'll up. Off and I'll do it with, it. with your with your twelve. So why are we why are we using an adjustable here? Because uh, because it fits. You're holding the arm in place. Because it moves. Right. So we don't want to snap the arm. No. So we hold the arm in place with an adjustable spanner. Twenty. Lovely. Beautiful. Exactly the same amount of rattly force, which is all of my rattly force. That one's right. tight. Two. Yeah. I'm using the same force. Yeah. Adjust your valves, boys and girls. So there's how you do it. You adjust the valves to get peak torque, and uh, if you're very fortunate, you can use a big Dave. Uh, for everyone else, uh, you have to use tools. But that's how it's done. I hope that was a useful video, or if nothing else, at least it was interesting. So thanks very much. Take care, make good decisions. I'll see you in another video. Bye.